Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sky Lounge. I'm Raven Galactic. I'll be your host for this evening. Uh, I would like to. Uh, we are go tonight. We're going to do the pre-flight and the walk around, and that is a very, uh, uh, a very important part of flying because before you can get in the air. You have to make sure that all your systems are in working order and that everything is okay to fly. Because the last thing you want to do is uh, get in the air and realize that, in fact, you, uh, you do have a problem that could have been solved on the ground. Now, before we get started, uh, I've asked you guys, uh, if you'd like, to follow along on a checklist that we've put on the skylounge.tv. Uh, please go ahead and go to the uh, link that's in chat. I will go ahead and link it again. No visuals. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, put the link in chat one more time here. And that way you guys can take a look and follow along yourselves. Now, Mr. Sparks, our most outstanding post has said that there are no visuals at the moment. <laughs> okay, that confirms that people can in fact see the airplane. We're going to go ahead and uh, get started here. Now, the important, why do you do a pre-flight? What's, what's going on with this? So, it's very important because you're sitting in your airplane, not usually on an active runway at a military base, but it's the default airport for P3D, so we'll go with it. Um, but what happens is, is you're sitting in your aircraft, you're wanting to fly, but there's a number of things that you need to do beforehand to make sure that uh, uh, you are in fact ready to fly. Checklists are designed to help you have a shorthand way of getting uh, all of the information and all of the steps you need to get into the air quickly. Now, first of all, this should never take the place of the aircraft uh, operating handbook, which can also be found in, uh, in the Sky Lounge folder uh, that you found your checklist in. Now, the reason, the reason that I say never, take, uh, never takes the place is that's your resource. So, for instance, when you get good enough and that you're flying your Cessna 172 on a regular basis, you can get the pattern down to the point where you're like, Okay, I've got this. Everything's going to be good. You know, I'm, I haven't missed anything important. But what the operating book does is it tells you all the whys behind, uh, behind the flying that you do. Now, uh, so if you have questions, I would suggest that you definitely go to the, the operating handbook that's, that's once again linked and uh, take a look at what, you can, uh, what answers you can find there. Uh, Learning is the, is the pilot's best resource. But if you still do have questions afterwards, I encourage you come to the, uh, the hangar on Discord where I'll be uh, answering any and all of your questions afterwards. Uh, and uh, any of the, uh, anything on topic is, is open game. So I encourage you to get on Discord and come join us. Um, I won't be answering questions uh, at the beginning or, or during the during the show, A, because we're recording this and I'm going to be putting it on YouTube and it, it wouldn't be very fluid if, uh, if we were all um, stopping to answer questions, the person on the YouTube can't see the questions, so on. And then also, uh, it's just more organized that way. So, all right. So we're going to pull out our checklist here and the first thing that we come to are the documents. Now, of course, an aircraft cannot fly without the documents, and they're almost always found right here. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, what would you call it? Not a glove box, but uh, it's just a place where you put your charts, as you can see. There's already one in there, and then there's also usually your uh, ARO. Now, ARO is a great acronym. It stands for Airworthiness Certificate, 
this is the certificate that the inspector has signed off that says you are allowed to fly. R used to be first. There used to be two R's. The first one was radio operator's permit. That gives you a FCC license in the United States, a Federal Communications Commission license to to uh, use the radios. The second one, though, is registration. Now, the registration is where what comes with your tail number. So, for instance, this registration is linked to 7274 Hotel. Now, that is your unique numbers and letters, N standing for the United States, United States, and so on. Um, then we have the operating handbook, which must be in the airplane at all times while flying. And then W is for weight and balance. Weight and balance will actually cover in a whole separate episode. It will cover the entire, will cover as, as simply as possible why uh, the weight of your aircraft is important and why it's important that it's in balance. So second, we have the control lock. Now you might not have been aware of a control lock, but if you notice right here, the yellow and white, or the, the red and white uh, lock here, uh, that prevents uh, the wind from moving the controls when you're not flying it and when, it's, when there's no one in it. So let's just do a handy trick. And we'll go ahead and take the yoke off so you can see it a little bit better. But as you can see, it's a bar that goes through the yoke, it holds it in place, and it's in these, in it, and it's very well seen so that you make sure you don't take off with it. And unfortunately, as with everything, somebody has taken off with it. That's why it has to be in these big bold letters here. Very dangerous and very important. So we're going to go ahead and take the control lock off. And just turn the yoke back on for now. Give you a good idea what that looks like. Second are the magnetos. Well, let's just go ahead and turn this off then. The magnetos down here, left, right, and both, they, uh, they are what used to start the airplane. They turn mechanical energy into electrical energy, which is used to uh, start the ignition. Fuel selector. Excellent. Glad you asked about the fuel selector. Let's just go ahead and... Ah, I could have used that. Let's let's go back real quick here. Notice on the magnetos, it's the uh, same as your ignition switch in a car, but it's not ignition. It's uh, right, left, both, and then start. And in normal flight, you'll be using both magnetos at the same time to make sure there's a spark to the uh, the engine. Here is our fuel shutoff valve. Now, for, for training purposes, I've made everything as difficult as possible, but usually you would find this to be in like that. It's red because if you, uh, you would not want to be touching that in flight. Then you have the left, the left fuel tank in the left wing, the right fuel tank in the right wing, and both fuel tanks at the same time, feeding gas to the engine so that it continues to run. We'll go ahead and flip that to both, as it says. And there you go. Sometimes this would be used as if you have a imbalance in your fuel. For instance, if the right is uh, full and the left is half full, you can actually have the aircraft uh, want to turn right in that situation. So we go ahead and Make sure it's to both because usually before you take off in a Cessna, you're going to get roughly two hours of flying time before you need to land. So you use time to say, hey, you know, this is only in certain situations. Uh, another situation would be if you're practice, if you're doing training and you're in like a constant left turn. Some of that fuel will actually uh, burn uh, differently in each tank and in certain aircraft will actually shift to the other tank through the fuel system. Okay, let's go back to the avionics master. Good morning, Mr. Or good, good evening, Mr. Pincom, wherever you may be. Uh, and I see we don't have our. There we go. Now I did. I think uh, Mr. Bucknatic uh, joined our first class, if I'm not mistaken. If if you have, definitely speak up, 
And we'll uh, we'll recognize you for that. Thank you very much. All right, back to the avionics master. So we have a whole separate system here for the avionics. We want to make sure that this is in fact off so that when we start the aircraft, there's no power surges, which will damage the equipment. Circuit breakers, just above that, we have our flaps, instrument panel, a bus. A bus is just a number of different uh, electrical pieces of equipment that just all run to one uh, circuit. There's the turn coordinator, instrument lights, so on and so forth. Those all look like they're in. Sometimes you'll want to check it. You can actually push on this and it'll pop out and just put it back in. It's very handy in flight if you're, say, for instance, having a uh, instrument light problem. You can uh, mess with that and see if it resets itself. Okay, fuel quantity indicators. Let's see if we... Fuel... I'm having a blank here. Usually it's over here on the right hand side. Ah, it's a round dial. So notice here, the fuel should actually, the fuel quantity check, and the way we do that is to go ahead and turn the masters on. And notice the fuel comes alive. It does say we have two full tanks at 26 gallons a piece. However, in aviation, we don't really uh, rely on the, uh, the fuel tanks, the fuel sensors to give us an accurate description of what fuel is in the tank uh, because they work on floats. And if one of the floats gets stuck, it will tell you that you're on 26 gallons for your entire flight. So definitely uh, need to use math and uh, a general rule uh, of two hours in a Cessna. So, going on, now we have low fuel lights. That's up here. If you notice, it's not illuminated. Uh, I couldn't find a test switch. There it is. Okay, the test switch is bright, and now test. So notice that all of the lights come on. We're testing, excellent, low fuel, pitch trim, voltage, vacuum, all is right there. Turn coordinator, no flag in the turn coordinator. So this is right here. This is the turn coordinator. It keeps you in a level, uh, a level turn and there are no flags there. Uh, flaps down. So now that we have our master switch on, we'll go ahead and turn the alternator on even though we don't need it. Once again, I'll explain later. We'll go ahead and check and make sure the flaps come all the way down. And that lever can be found right here. Notice it's even shaped like a flap and something very, you almost have to look at it with, you almost have to use it without looking at it sometimes. So, okay, avionics master on. Let's turn up the sound. That is our avionics war, uh, light. Okay, so now let's just turn the volume up here. And there doesn't seem to be uh, a, a a fan. Now the fan keeps the electronics cool just like it does in your computer. But uh, then we're going to go ahead and turn it back. Lights and pedo heat. So let's go ahead while we're down here and we're going to turn on. Not the pedo heat yet. There's a very important reason why. I will uh, I will tell you in a minute. So the panel lights. The avionics. I'm just going to go ahead and turn. Okay. 
So now that we have those on, we can visually say that yes, the the lights are coming on in the cockpit. Uh, that uh, everything is working. And while you're doing this, it's not a bad idea to take a look around. Maybe even get out of the airplane if you have to real quick. Notice that your green position light is on. Strobe. Rotating beacon, the red light on top of the tail. And then we'll go over here. And see that, yes, in fact, that the landing and taxi lights are on. Okay, and then the master is off. We don't need to use that anymore. And the avionics master is off as well. Now we leave these lights on for safety uh, in flight and they can be left on uh, because you can never have too many lights on your aircraft, uh, especially when you're in the air and you're trying to see and avoid others. So now we get to get out of the aircraft and we're gonna go and Climb up on the, uh, use a ladder, climb up on the wing, and see if I can, there we go. I really like this chase plane. Okay, so you get on top of the wing here, you check the fuel, and... In fact, you look inside, and we have 26 gallons in each tank. The Aero Club did a good job of, of uh, filling it up. While we're here, I would probably recommend, let's see. While I'm here, I'll show you oil. The oil is located in this uh, little compartment right here. So what you do is you open that up, and you see that there should be about seven quarts of oil now in this perfect uh, situation of a Cessna 172 it says eight gallons is at a hundred percent but the rule of thumb and usually what happens in a Cessna uh, aircraft is anything past seven and the oil will actually uh, uh, overflow out of the airplane and it'll get your it's not a it's not an issue it's just that it'll get your uh, your, your belly all black and, and then you have to go and clean it later or have the, the, line, the line boy go do it. But you don't want that to happen in the first place. Okay, so we've checked the tanks. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna remove our tie downs. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and Remove the tie downs. Now, tie downs are for wind, uh, because this this thing is made to fly. A good gust of wind that's that's uh, heavy enough will actually be able to flip airplanes upside down, and not even in like a hurricane, but just on a windy day if it's if it's pointed in the right direction. So tie downs off. Okay, we have our wheel chocks here, and it does not include that on the checklist. And and a one thing to be important about one thing that's very important about the the uh, the walk around is use the checklist as a device, but make sure you go around and and totally look at anything that's dumb, dangerous, or different. Just go around, look around, and I'll show you a bunch of shortfalls that you'll find here in a minute. So let's turn the wheel chocks off. Up oh, sunglasses, we've got to have those and headphones. Not yet. Oh, look at that. They thought of everything. Okay, so now we're going to start our, we're going to start our walk around. Uh left tank sumps. Uh you'll learn a little more about that when you do get in when you do whoops. When you do get into the aircraft, uh just to know, let you know if we can zoom in on it here. It is underneath the wing at six different points underneath the wing, usually on a Cessna. Okay. And those little black dots are the sumps. What that does is that you, you sump the, uh, the tank to make sure that there is no water in the tank. 
water can happen for a number of reasons. Either there's a, a top leak and the rain has got inside. Sometimes there was already uh, water in the, in the fuel and it separates over time. Uh, there are a number of different reasons, but you want to make sure that there's no water in the tank because it's uh, wa uh, gas floats on water and it will be the first thing that gets sucked into the engine and it almost always happens on takeoff. So main tires and brakes, you want to make sure that the tread is good. You want to test the brakes. Uh, they need to be mushy, but not too mushy. If they go all the way to the floor, there might be a problem. They should have some authority to them. Just like in your uh, car. Uh, they work on air the same as in your car. And then the baggage door is secure. And that is usually on the pilot side. Yep. Let's see if we can open it. Battery generator. So what is all this? All right, anyways. Okay, so rudder pedals free and secure. So we'll go back here and we'll look at it from the inside. Now notice I can I can take my rudder pedals, go them the full distance. We just talked about brakes, so you can push them down. And that was the uh, the parking brake that just got released there. And then we'll go to the outside. And in fact, if everything goes well, you can see the rudder move. And then you can see the horizontal stabilizer move. All right. Pneumatics. They work on pneumatics. And then uh, hydraulic. Anyways. So it, that's just the same as bleeding your brakes. Anyways. So then we come to right flap and aileron. So we're getting out of the aircraft now. We're going to move around. We're going to make sure that all the components of your flap are okay. Now it's in the down position because you can see up inside the flap. And that way, uh, uh, and that way you can see that there's a uh, proper uh, play in the, uh, the components and that it's secure. And then you look over here and you can check your ailerons real quick and manually test them, put them up. And then, uh, Then we have uh, wingtip and leading edge. You want to make sure you check that. You want to make sure there's no cracks. Even this little winglet here, this little part that comes down on the very edge of the wing, can be very important to flying. A, if it breaks off, it could be a hazard. B, if it breaks off, or uh, it can be a, uh, uh, it can actually change the the, the shape of your wing. And then you want to make sure that there's not a whole lot of bugs and stuff. All those little creatures that uh, that got uh, that got caught uh, unsuspectingly on the side of your, on your on your leading edge. Over here is the stall warning horn, and it uses uh, your angle of attack. It uses the direction of your airflow to decide if there's a stall or not, and there will be a whistle in the airplane. Okay, antennas, yeah, looks like our antennas are okay. You'll see one here. And then you'll see a navigation antenna up here. All right, and then you'll look down here and you see this has nine, these are brand new tires just out of the, just out of 100 hour. Got nice deep tread in them. They're nice and black. They're not filled with dirt. Uh, for instance, if your tread is filled with mud uh, and you need to make a, a, an emergency stop at any time, that mud will actually prevent you from, from making a, 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 an abrupt enough stop. You'll also check inside here. If you see, if you can see closely, 
there is a a little metal tube right there and that's what actuates the brakes okay then we walk around towards the back we've checked the fuel quantity our access door is closed uh, check the exhaust that's important it's actually going kind of backwards here because what I would do is check that last but we'll go with the checklist and we'll just go down here and then over here now this is a very very important part of the pre-flight checklist Okay, we'll just do that. Here's the exhaust. Exhaust is where the uh, the spent fuel comes out. Cre creepy crawlers, squirrels, and rats, and mice, and everything else can get up into here and create a nest. These are your uh, air inlets, and birds love to make nests in here. That's just how they do it. In fact, a lot of times you'll find that people will put these foam... They put big pieces of foam in there to prevent that from happening. This right here is your air inlet for the carburetor. It's a piece of foam with some um, with some chemicals on it that uh, allow air to come in without too much debris because it is a big tube going straight into your engine and you don't want debris in your engine. Uh, but that all these all need to be need to make sure that they are uh, they're free. Also, when you check the oil. Make sure that there aren't any uh, loose wrenches. You know, did somebody work on it and forget to put it away? Uh, are there bees nests in there? All different kinds of things can happen, especially if you haven't flown the aircraft in a while. All right, so nose and wheel strut. We'll just get right in here. No, we won't. Yes, we will. Okay, we're just going to zoom in on the wheel strut there. If we could just get that exhaust out of the way. All right, so here's our wheel strut. It's the silver thing in the middle of your screen. And what that does is cushion your, cushion your landings and provide uh, so that it's not metal on metal uh, when you do land. But there should be about a four finger width uh, amount of uh, showing. That's your rule of thumb. And you just go ahead and you place your four fingers up against the strut and you just make sure that it's properly uh, there's a proper amount of uh, pressure in there all right prop and spinner also very important you want to make sure that the prop doesn't have any nicks in it scratches dents we just had a situation the other day where uh, a guy left the tow bar and get uh, on the aircraft when he started it up so what happens the uh, the propeller starts turning, hits the hits the tail or the uh, the tow tow bar. Tow bar goes flying into the wall and puts a actually embeds itself in the wall. Uh, got a big nick on the uh, propeller, and then when it gets to the shop, it's like, well, it was considered a sudden stop of the propeller, so now they have to tear down the entire uh, engine just to get just to get. Uh, uh, just to get the airplane flying again because uh, you don't know what, what happened internally to make sure that the, uh, th that the engine couldn't have suffered something internally. So it's very important. Check for nicks, check for rust, check for uh, a warp. Cooling intakes are, are these inlets right here. Those are clear. Alternator belt is found inside the cowling here. Uh, and also, you can see it uh, right behind the, I don't think you'll be able to see it here, but it's right behind the the propeller. Air filter down here. Nose and wheel strut static port. Static port, I, they've thought of everything else, and my hat's off to 80A for the amount of precision. Here it is. Oh, my. Ugh. That right there is the static port. Now we'll be getting into a P the pitot static system, but for right now, just know that it equalizes the air in the pitot static system. And that needs to be clear of any debris or 
uh, any bugs in there as well uh, for reasons I will tell you in a little bit. Okay, pedo tube. The all important pedo tube. Sometimes it's called a pedot tube. I don't know what the exact uh, right way to say it, but I think that's the French saying. But what this does is the pedo tube supplies ram air pressure to the airspeed indicator. So just like you're flying down the road in your car, the ram air allows the speed of the airspeed to be measured, which is not necessarily your ground speed. Just keep that in mind for later. Turn this off, pedo cover. Ah, we call it the Sparks, Mr. Sparks cover for a reason. Excellent. All right. Stall indicator. Does anybody, has anybody ever checked a stall indicator before? Well, the way you do it is put your mouth on it and blow on it. And that is, that is actually the correct way to, to do it. Because when you t blow on it, you'll hear the stall warning horn in the... There it is right there. This instrument right here is the stall warning horn, and you will hear the stall sound go off. And it's angled at just the right way so that it will sound when you are stalling. Okay, fuel vent. There it is. Uh, let me see if I can maneuver it. The fuel vent is right behind the strut. There it is. Let me zoom in here. It's this right here. This no another piece of metal. So, say you let say you take off on a cold day. The air warms up. It gets hot. You actually have a fuel vent here so that some fuel will go overboard and it won't uh, damage the the tanks internally. So you'll notice that sometimes this is dripping, especially uh, when the temperature has changed a lot during the day. Leading edge and wingtip, like I said, make sure there's not a lot of bugs. Make sure you go ahead and clean it because even the bugs affect the uh, the airfoil. Uh, left aileron, free and secure. We already checked that. Left flap, we checked. Oh no, we've checked the right ones. So let's just do a walk around. So we're going by. We see a. We see the. Uh, we see the antenna right here. And you want to visually look. A lot of stuff on the pre-flight checklist is simply. A lot of stuff on the free pre-flight checklist is simply. G whiz type of stuff like, is there something hanging from the plane? Is there dents on the plane? So we go and just look up here. We see that it just came out of the factory. It's nice and new. It's kind of like a unicorn. You'll never actually see one in the real world. They're mostly from uh, 30, 50 years ago and have seen good days. But this is a brand new one. Upwards in the range of beginning at two, 225000 Whereas one from the 70s or so you can get for 30, 35, 40 dollars. So we go around here, we look around, we make sure that the rudder, we used our hands and we push the rudder back and forth, making sure that these two, uh, these two attachments right here are working properly. These feed through the aircraft into the rudder pedals. And then uh, let's check our uh, elevators. Go all the way down full. You want to know that they have full deflection, you call it. And while we're here, let me show you something. I'm gonna tr I'm gonna use my trim wheel, and it should if you can see it. Yep, there it goes. We're gonna we're gonna move our trim wheel all the way up, and that is the fine tuning that we talked about last week. So now you would definitely wouldn't want to take off like this, and you wouldn't have to do it for takeoff. But you want to make sure that that uh, piece of metal, the uh, connecting rod, is secure. I have to 
Roll it all the way back. Okay. All right. 63, climb in, chain 1, 3, down. 1, 3, down, number 6, sir. 63, contact the New York Center, 128.3. 